G'day folks, welcome to this playthrough of All Bridges Burning, Red Revolt and White Guard in Finland, 1917 to 1918. This is uh, volume 10 in Volko Runke's coin series. It was published by GMT Games in 2020. And this is the first dedicated uh, three-player coin title. It... Uh, focuses on conflict in Finland, 1917-1918, including the civil war that, uh, that uh, erupted. We have three factions here. We've got up the top here, the Whites, the Senate. Uh, they are a conservative faction aided by Imperial Germany um, trying to gain control of the country. Down the bottom right here, we have Red Communist forces, Soviet forces, uh, aided by Russia. Hey Geoffrey, welcome again. Um, aided by Russia and they are trying to increase opposition to the government. And then down here we have the moderate blue forces and they play kind of a middle ground playing the two factions off against each other and to win they need to acquire a lot of resources. So three very different factions. We also have our, our deck. I'm going to try and place the deck here so it's easy for everyone to see. We begin the game by revealing a card and then revealing the next card. Now, uh, this is, uh, as I said, it's a three-play game. There are solitaire rules, but it's one of the, if not one of, the, yeah, it's, it's one of the most complicated um, solitaire systems in the coin series. So I don't want to tackle that. I'm not a big fan of the the bot system in coin games. They very, very, very complicated. Um, there are sort of special rules for, I'll just give an example, special rules for sort of various cards, um, which I don't want to have to wrestle with. So I'm playing it basically three-handed, just to demonstrate how the game works. I'll play through a fair bit, give you a sense of how the gameplay sort of rolls out. Um, I probably won't have time to finish the whole thing, but let's see how we go. So the game starts with random order of eligibility. And basically you'll notice, if you're familiar with the coin series, um, you'll notice there's no order of eligibility on these cards, just the event. Let me show you how this works. So blue is eligible first, and whew, I haven't played blue before. Um, they want to increase resources. They don't have a lot of forces to place on the map. Um, they need to place their, their bases called, I think they're called administrations on the map. That's one thing. Um, they want to sort of strive towards. Denying, denying um, the reds and the whites these cannons could be good. So they, they just do a limited command, it prevents the event from happening. Coin is counter insurgency. Uh, it's a series designed originally by Volko Runke. Uh, I think the first title was Andean Abyss, which I've got kind of over on my shelf, so I can bring it over if, if you're interested. And it the titles in the series typically feature kind of a strong government force um, and a paramilitary force versus an insurgency force and a fourth kind of um, insurgency allied force. Uh, yes, yeah, so typically, they're typically four player games. We've seen Colonial Twilight, which I also have on my shelf over there, which is a two player coin game, which is brilliant. And this is the first three player coin game. Um, so yeah, the, the deck here is is really the the focus of sorry it's, it's, it drives gameplay. A card comes out, and the first eligible faction in this case blue decides what they want to do. They have three choices: they can have the event take place. They don't need cannons. I don't think they can even use cannons. Um, they don't attack or anything, so they're not going to do that. They could do a command and special activity. This is kind of the full, most powerful action, but then they'll become ineligible. Or they can do a limited command, which is basically a command in, in one area. These are, sorry, it's hard to get that glare. That's a list of actions, rally, message, negotiate, and politics. Um, Yeah, we should also, you should always look at the next event um, in a coin game. And this is flip 1d6 friendly cells. That's a very, very powerful event. Ooh, geez. 
or moderate resources plus three. You know what? The moderates want that event because they want resources. So their first action is going to be to pass. When passing, you come down here, and I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little number, oh, sorry, the letter A down the bottom here. That's important. I'll come back to this in a moment. Just keep in mind that when you pass, you're in box A. I'll explain why in a moment. And when they pass, the moderates gain one resource. So they're already doing pretty well, <laughs> relatively speaking. Next eligible faction is red. And you know what? They're not going to pass off the opportunity for these cannons. So the reds gain some cannons. We pick up a red cannon and we put it in their capabilities box up here. This is a common capabilities box. What this means is the war hasn't broken out yet. Both sides are really just posturing. When war breaks out, and war breaks out when there are 27 or more red and white cells on the board, when war breaks out, reds will get this cannon and they'll place it with one of their armies. Okay, as simple as that. So they're preparing for war. They've bought some cannons. They haven't quite deployed them yet. This, however, gives whites the opportunity to do a command and special or a limited command. And yeah, I'm familiar with the whites because I've played them before. Um, what are they going to do? Well, you know what? We might use this opportunity to try and gain... We don't have a lot of cells on the board, so there's two options here. We could rally. You, know, you may notice everyone starts off very weak. The whites could rally and place a number of extra cells. The problem with that... Actually, yeah, let's do that. We'll, uh, but we might just do a limited command so that we stay active. Now, so yeah, we'll do that. We'll do a limited command, which will be a rally. We're not going to do a special, just... Actually, no, what the heck, what the heck. We need to rally because one thing I'm factoring in here is the whites need to kind of secure a source of income. And they secure that income from all these empty territories out here. Basically, this deck is carefully prepared. The first five cards are going to be regular events. The next five cards will have a propaganda card inserted somewhere randomly. When this comes out, income is generated, and the whites generate income from having support from their population. Or actually, just support, period. Doesn't matter what the population is. So, I'm going to rally. I'm going to spend one, two, three resources. Um, Yeah, three resources to rally. When I rally, I place new cells. It starts with a basis of one. So you can see I'm rallying in Vasa. I should point this out. I spent re three resources I'm rallying here. I'm going to rally here, and I'm going to rally here. Why not? Actually, we'll play it safe. I'll see how this goes. a safer option. I'm going to rally here, here, and here. Um, this going to cost me three resources, which I've paid for. I get one cell plus one per level of support. I have active support, two levels, so I get two more cells here. Here I get one, no support, so just base one. And over here I get one, no support, so base one. I could have rallied here, which would have given me two, but what I'm trying to do here is spread out my forces um, to basically get more support in these areas to generate more income in the long term. Now, as part of this action, uh, is it command and special activity, I can use one of the white's special activities. Now, they there are five special activities here. Again, hard to see, sorry. Um, I can't do this because I don't have any active cells. These are all inactive. They haven't been flipped over. Once they're flipped over, they'll have a star on them and they become active. I could... Uh, Modified German vassalage. I'm not worried about that right now. I could prepare, and this is a good one to do. Um, yeah, so basically, the prepare action I take one of these prepared markers and I place it wherever I have a cell, a Senate cell, and it increases my defense should I ever be attacked in Vipuri. Uh, hopefully, I won't be, but. Well, now I'm prepared. And that's about it. That's the end of the first card. 
Now we determine the eligibility at the end of this sequence. So now we look at the letters. A becomes first, B becomes second, there's no B. Because white went to this gray action, they become ineligible on the next card, which leaves red, B, C, D to become second eligible faction. And we draw a new card. And that's basically the way the game works. This is the current card, this is the next card. We know the next card will enable, if the Senate can play this, they'll take a Jaeger marker, or uh, enable, you get a choice back to when there's an event, you can do top half or bottom half. So the top half helps the Senate, um, which would, the, the whites would actually love that. The Senate would love that, to take a Jaeger marker. It's basically a combat modifier. Or flip up two non-Senate cells. Well, the reds would like that as well. Um, but as I said, the blues, this is a current event. The blue wants to play this for the event. And they want to take moderate resources plus three because that's their victory condition, basically. One, two, three. And it's otherwise kind of hard for the moderates to gain resources. So they're taking that event, plus three resources, great. They're on nine. They need kind of 15 as part of, part of their win condition. This now leaves the red, and they could do a full command and special or a limited command, but, um, well, I'm kind of tempted to flip those Senate cells. Uh, to be honest though, they could do something similar via a command and special action. So they'll do that. The reds will do a command, and the red commands are very similar. In fact, they're almost identical to the whites with some slight variation. So, the Reds want to engage in what's called activism. Um, this enables them to basically remove active Reds, there are none, to reduce polarization. Um, not worry about that right now, early in the game. Later that might be important. Or they can flip one enemy for each two inactive. Don't need to worry about that either because there are no active enemies in these areas. So they're basically, what they do, sorry, I'll move these. They pick one space for activism. It doesn't really matter where they're active. Let's say here, they're active. They don't do um, the, the flipping ability, because that's it, and it's if desired. Then, and this is the important thing, they so have to pay one resource for the space selected, and then they pay another resource, two, if desired, um, activate 1d6 of red cells evenly anywhere on the map, and that's what they want to do. So we'll take the red die, they'll roll one dice, two. It's not great, <laughs> in fact it's pretty bad. They can flip one, uh, let's flip, flip here, and in fact we lose red control of that area. The other thing I should have done on that last activation, the whites added five cells, so we increase we increase that marker by five. So we were hoping for a better roll than two. Um, the reason being, the event would have let us flip two cells for free. We had to pay two resources for the, uh, for the privilege of doing so. So that's frustrating. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, they can also do a special activity uh, they now have flipped cells though, so they can do the political event, but they no longer control the puri. So they could gain one resource if they want. <sighs> yeah, I think they'll do that as a bit of a compensation. Uh, it's not the best special activity to do at this stage. Um, the other thing they could do is increase Russian vassalage, basically calls on Russia for help, uh, and it keeps those Russian armies out on the border. I think they might do that. That's a good long-term, good long-term action to do. Otherwise, because Russian vassalage deteriorates each propaganda phase, and if it deteriorates, it removes these Russian troops from the board, and they provide combat modifiers for red forces in these areas. So by keeping that high, it keeps these Russian armies on the board. Okay, that's the end of the second card play. And the reds become ineligible. They have a B, so whites become first. They have a D, they become second.
And as I said, the whites really want that event, so they're going to jump on that immediately. Um, what this does is the Senate takes a Jaeger marker. This is what they look like. It's another capability, so it goes up in the capabilities box. And again, when war breaks out, they'll deploy those to the field, and that's a combat modifier for white combat. Uh, it also, uh, you need these Jaegers for whites to, I think, use their cannon and train modifiers. They're kind of like, yeah, you need those forces. Blue now has the option to do a command or limited, but let's look at the next event, which you should always do first. In one space with a friendly cell, send it all reds, free terror. So there's basically, it's, it's a terror action, but it's, it's free. Or place an available moderate cell anywhere. Um, they don't really care about that so much. Um, what we might do, actually, that shouldn't be control, that should be something else, sorry. Turku should be one red cell, one, yeah. Uh, what are they going to do? They could rally to get some more troops on the board. I don't know why that's... That should not be there. Helsinki is neutral. Yep. Um... So I think the idea, the reason why this might be interesting, place an available moderate cell anywhere, is because it's free. Otherwise, it's going to cost me some resources. And again, the moderates want to be accumulating resources. So basically, if I pass right now and then take this event, I might do that actually. So the blue, the moderates will pass yet again. They'll gain a resource when you pass. That's the end of the turn. So now. We go in order. A goes first, and then B, and then C, just like that. So despite white taking that event, they still become eligible on the next card. And the next card is flip two cells anywhere, or the reds may place an available administration in a province with friendly pieces. Uh, that's pretty good for the reds. Uh, flipping two cells anywhere is also pretty good. But for now, as I said, the blues want to place an available moderates cell anywhere. Anywhere. Um, look, I think having a bit of presence around the board is pretty good. I don't know. This is not necessarily optimal strategy, as always. Uh, so I'm denying the reds control of Turku. You need an absolute majority. Um, so denying them that. And that's all. But that, what that does is it spreads, keep in mind, they've only got six cells to place. It spreads their cells out. Um, yeah, I think that's a decent thing to do. The reds now uh, have next option. They can do a full command and special. Or place, oh, sorry. Yeah, or a limited command, or wait until the next event. Reds may place, and again, that's another really good event for the Reds, placing an available administration. So I think they want to pass, they'll gain a resource, and they'll leave it up to the Whites, and the Whites will jump at the opportunity to do a command and special. And hmm, they now, want to flip their things to active. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So now the whites are going to do this Activision action. They pay, oops, that should be removed. They pay, they pick one space, pay one resource, doesn't matter really where that space is. Um, they have no active cells, so they can't reduce polarization. They could flip one enemy. Again, there are none that they could really target. So they're ignoring that first option Rather, they are now, if desired, paying one resource to activate 1d6. So let's get the white dice. Let's, whoops. 
Let's hope they roll well. Two. Okay. <laughs> um, frustrating, but one. Actually, what I'm going to do is say one, two, and try and activate, try and incite the people in the countryside to come over to support the government. We've already got some support here, some support here. This will already give us income. I'm trying to generate income out in these areas eventually. Hey, Jen Chaos. Yeah, Falling Sky is one of our favorites. Um, yeah, yeah, there's a, there's, oh, it's hard to pick. They're all great games. Um, yeah, one of my friends is an ancient historian. He's, he owns Falling Sky and he loves that. Um, if you like that also, if you like Falling Sky, I don't know if you've seen um, Rome, Caesar versus Gaul. Um, covers the same, the Gallic Wars as well. And I also did some videos on the block games version, Caesar's Gallic Wars, I think it's called, a couple of, couple of weeks ago. So that's all the whites are doing, really. They actually, you know what? They need money. So instead of doing that, I'm going to flip these ones instead. Because my second action is going to be political event, which lets me add resources where I have an active cell and control. Only two spaces. You know what, actually, sorry. These are also now controlled. Yeah, so it could be those, <laughs> my apologies. Control and cells, two spaces, two resources. So getting a bit of money back. Yeah, there are a few good coins. There's also that sort of variant, uh, variant coming out. Um, oh, it's, what's it called? Um, something Conflict Games. It's like, I think they're modelled modeled sort of somewhat on the coin series. Irregular Conflict series, I think. So it's sort of a variant on, on coin. Um, okay, so both of these are done. Red becomes first, blue becomes second, white becomes ineligible. Another disappointing die roll um, to activate their cells. A new card comes out and we have, we demand a manifesto. Senate resources plus three. The Senate would love this. Moderates in red place available cell anywhere without active support. Then they can um, place or remove one cube in the political display. This is another of the moderates' actions. They can engage in politics to place cubes up there. They'd rather the Senate resources. But let's see what the red is going to do. Red is going to flip two cells or place an available administration. They're definitely going to pick the event. They're both pretty good. Um, I think I like the idea of placing an available administration in a province with friendly pieces. Okay, well, I might place this down here in Usima. A bit of a reds are stronger down the south, so placing it here is safe. Yeah, I like that idea. That now increases red's victory point margin because this is an administration, also known as a base in other coin series, and it's what the reds need to place for victory. That's basically an extra victory point for, for the reds. Um, think of it in those terms. Flipping cells would have been nice, but yeah, that's a long-term gain for the Reds. Also helps them to rally here, I think. Uh, so that's that. Blues are going to pass because they really want more resources. And they get a resource for passing as well. Okay, so blue becomes first eligible, B, white becomes second, red third. Now, I think we're in the rain. We've had one, two, three, four, five. Yep, any one of these cards now could be the propaganda. So blue first. This is the event. The train, this is a um, very, very good capability to have. Uh, the blues want the event because they want plus three resources. One, two, three. The whites. Um, 
they'd really like to flip a few more markers. Uh, hmm, or should they rally? So this is, the, this is where it gets interesting. The very next card could be propaganda, and that, that will uh, generate income. Um, but the whites are kind of only getting, they're going to get maybe three extra resources as a result of that. So the, you know, if, they, if they, the two choices here are basically um, try and flip more cells over, which is kind of long term, or try to rally into a few more of these empty spaces and then try to flip them over if they get a second action. What they could do, or they want this train as well. I think they've got to take the train because the train is a very good capability. So they're going to pass, gain a resource. The reds now have the next. Yeah, I saw that Bronx Expressway title. It looks very interesting by uh, an interesting, na interestingly named designer. Um, uh, yeah, I think the designer is like non-regular something or other. Um, yeah, check out the designer's name for Bronx Expressway title. Okay, so red. They can do now, they can pass if they want, or they can do a command and special or a limited command. Now, they have active cells here and here, so they could engage in terrorism here to remove the whites. And in fact, they want to do just that. So they are going to pay, they can do a limited command, they don't need to do this a lot. They're going to pay one resource. A limited command is basically a command, but limited to just one space. Um, and this, the advantage of this is they remain active on the next card, they don't become inactive if they do a full command and special. So by engaging in terrorism, they pay one resource per space, which they've just done. They remove one non-enemy troop. So they're taking the whites off the board. Now, when there is a prepared marker without sort of a friendly force, it's also removed. So the whites kind of wasted um, that special activity earlier now. There's no personality there, so they can't transfer moderate resource. Oh, sorry, look at the wrong thing, look at the white. Um, yeah, there's no personality. Last, they place one available red terror marker in this space. This makes it more difficult for, I think, the moderates and the whites to rally in that space. That's all it does. Okay, that is it. So they pass, they become first, reds become second, blues become third eligible for trains. Let's see if there's a propaganda. No propaganda, but more Jaegers. Ooh, okay. Well, they've already got Jaegers. Trains would be brilliant. So they're going to take the trains. And now the whites have got two combat capabilities. So I find trains in here. It looks like that. This, I talked about this in the review that I've done. This enables um, forces to kind of engage in a bit of a surprise combat. Normally you have to move in first and then wait, an action, wait a turn and then attack as a separate action. Trains enable forces to move and attack, basically, or rather attack from an adjacent space. Technically. All right, the Reds. The Reds need now to um, shift some spaces to opposition. They've got pa passive, passive, passive. Um, I'm just thinking. Maybe they want to engage in activism again to flip some more cells over. Um, yeah, activism will give them that die roll. Got three re resources so they can afford it.
Sorry, I'm just thinking about my reductions. Rally, Rally would get more troops on the board. In fact, I think they have red control here now as well. So if Rally would get more troops on the board, that's great. Um, they could replace two cells with an admin. That's okay. Activism flips these cells over. Um, and here, they can increase this to opposition. Um, or, if they pass, they can take the commander marker and kind of prepare for war. I think they need to kind of need to do that. They need some combat capability. So what we might do is the reds, uh, yeah, we'll pass. We'll gain a resource for passing. And we'll let the white, uh, the blues decide what they want to do. Now they haven't done any politics yet. There's no politics markers in the political display. So they need to do um, some of that. Uh, which is the personality action. No, sorry, not personality. Ah, oh, politics. It's a politics action. So um, they could do this as a limited command and remain second eligible. Or they could, uh, yeah, may as well just do that as a, as a limited, I guess. So basically they're doing the politics action. They're advancing a political issue. Um, the cost is per the polarization track, so it costs them two resources. One, two. Actually, let me just check the moderate's victory conditions because they're pretty close to their... Uh, <laughs> moderate resources exceed 14 and resolved issues is greater than polarization. Yeah, okay, so they're not, not quite that close. Um, so they're going to do a politics and basically when they do this, they place an available cube of either color in the politics display. I think they're going to take a white cube and place it there. They need to do that a lot more frequently though. Okay, end of that action. We've got first, second, third, and propaganda. Okay, so when we have a propaganda phase, it basically, we flip these over, so this will be now be the next card out. Propaganda happens immediately. We, we first check to see if anyone's won. Well, the reds are nowhere near there, 12, uh, opposition. The whites only control one town, so they're a long way from four. And the moderates don't have networks and issues exceeding polarization, so they don't need to worry about theirs. Now, the whites need to do, this is a politics phase, the whites need to make a die roll, sorry, the blue, the moderates need to make a die roll, and they need to roll um, less than or equal to the number of cubes up in that politics display. So they need to roll a one, and they rolled a one. Okay, didn't expect that. Okay, so if they roll a one, the issue becomes resolved. Um, count and then remove all cubes from the politics display and mark an unresolved issue as resolved using the provided markers. Oh, actually, I should have removed that, that was from the last game. So that's been resolved in white favor. So use the white side if the Senate cubes are greater in number than the red. Um, and then I adjust the issues, plus uh, networks plus issues, plus one, up one. So it starts off on basically zero issues resolved, plus one. Now I've got one, plus one, for two. And that goes back into white supply. Okay. That's a, that's a good little start for the moderates. We then go to the resources phase where each faction gains new resources. The Senate gains one for each level of support, basically one, two, three. That's all they've got. One, two, three. 
but they're mindful of that. That's why they've done this thing. The reds gain one for each level of red controlled, controlled population. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yep. And the moderates gain one for every two levels of polarization, just one. Now it's up to five, and then every two levels up to five, and then one for every level above that. So they kind of want to increase it early um, to gain income. At the same time, increasing that increases the cost of their politics action. So it's a bit, it's a bit interesting. Uh, now we, now we go to the uh, support phase. We first of all engage in Russian turmoil. The Russian vassalage level drops down by one. And then we do agitation. Now the way uh, agitation works is where the white, the Senate goes first and where they have control and an active cell, so only these two spaces, control and active, they can spend resources to increase support in that area. So basically, what I can do is go one, two, to shift these two country areas to passive support. And I can do that multiple times. So I can spend a further two, one, two, to increase it to active support. Now that doesn't, it doesn't matter for population, it doesn't matter what the population is there. It's, it's um, I think. Um, yeah. So for this is, I'm doing this for, basically for resources during this production phase. Um, every production, every propaganda phase, there are four in the game. So the next propaganda phase, it'll be two resources and two resources. So I'm kind of investing in my future. Okay. Now, red can do the same. They need red control and red active cells. I've only got two of those, so two red active cells. That's where having a red active cell would have been here, when here would have been nice. They could have increased that opposition. They, they're gonna spend, uh, actually, there is one issue resolved in white favor. So that means that the first time they do this, they have to spend two resources instead of one. And that lets them shift that to active opposition, which is a victory point for them. They will spend another resource down here where they have control and an active cell to increase that to passive opposition. And why not do it again to active opposition? So that's another two victory points for the Reds. And uh, again, keep in mind, uh, this is their victory condition. So this is how the Reds and the Whites are flipped. The Reds generate income from control population and they win based on opposition. The Whites generate income based on opposition and they win by controlling the towns. Okay, now the moderates. For each space with no control, uh, there aren't many. <laughs> yeah, for each space with no control, moderate pieces and one plus population, they can shift support opposition um, but the moderates, they're here and there's no control, there's no opposition, they're here and there's no control, no opposition. So there's nothing they really can do. It would have been good for them to get one more cube. If they would have placed this cube here instead, they could have shifted that down to, uh, it would have been, they would have denied red control and denied them the, um, the, the opposition as well. So maybe they'll keep their eye on that for the future. Okay, we, uh, it's not the final propaganda round, so we, sorry, that's support, so it's not the final propaganda round. Um, we do a, a reset, so basically it's where we clear um, terror markers. And if the Russians, this is where, if I didn't increase that Russian vassalage, they'd now be down to two, and we'd have to remove a random Russian army cube, but we don't have to do that, because red prepared for that eventuality. Um, there's also a prisoners of war phase where you return prisoners 
Um, it's not the second propaganda phase, so we don't do the pivotal event, which I'll talk about later. And there's no sabotage and news markets. So now the propaganda card is done. This is the current event, and this is the next event. And it's another capability. This next event, so this is Jaegers or Commanders. This is German vassalage, and the Senate takes one Jaeger marker or place two available moderates or red cells anywhere without active support. Uh, that might be a good blue event to play. But right now, the reds really want this commander. So it's another red capability. We take this red commander, so now they're kind of balanced. There are two white capabilities, two red capabilities. Um, now blue kind of would like these cells, so they'll pass. I'm getting a resource. And I think the whites will go all out. They will once again engage in uh, activism. So then to spend a resource to perform the action, they will activate this many cells. Two, okay. Uh, let's say one and two in Helsinki. Maybe we can get engaged in some terrorism down in Helsinki. Or terror, rather, not terrorism. Um, that's two cells. Um, and their special will be to... Actually, you know what? If I do the... Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Our special will be to do a political event. So we gain resources in four spaces with active Senate cells and control one, two, three. Three resources. So that cost me one to do that action. One, two, three. We're back up to three. So these unlucky twos are meaning that we're not being able to flip many Senate cells, which means it's limiting our income and kind of limiting what we can do. Uh, okay. And they also become ineligible. White, uh, blue comes first, red second. Here's the event. And there's another one coming up next. Um, so Joffrey's saying it seems complex. Um, yeah, at first, I, I, I'll agree with you. Uh, we have played pretty much all the coin tiles except Gandhi and Cuba Libre. So we're very familiar with this. Even then, um, every coin game is unique in its own little way. So there's a lot of similarities. They all kind of feature these cells and areas. The maps look very similar. Um, but they all work in slightly different ways. Every side has slightly different victory conditions, often revolving around control or opposition like this. Um, but there are subtle tweaks with every series. You've got to keep your eye. I guess so, yeah, you, you always got to keep your eye on the victory conditions. So the, the blues, the moderates, are trying to accumulate resources. Eventually, they'll want polarization to be below their networks and that's what they need to win the game the reds are trying to accumulate opposition so they're trying to <laughs> i don't know what they're really doing they're trying to gain control of areas uh, and have these cells active um, and then yeah increase it there are various events which will increase it as well. Um, and the whites are trying to do the same thing, really, but they eventually need to take over these towns. So the whites are trying to build up... For now, they're trying to build up their income. Next step is to start building up their military capabilities. Unfortunately, the Reds have also been building up their military capabilities as well, which is kind of... If I was a white player, I'd be a bit worried about... Um, yeah, the strength of the Red forces. So yeah, keeping your eyes on those objectives and gradually building up towards it. Um, nobody's in a winning position right now. The blues are pretty close. The reds are reasonably close. The whites are a long way away. So the whites are playing the long game. Um, yeah. Blue event, uh, sorry, blue first eligible and place two available moderates anywhere without active support. I was gonna do this um, I was going to play
that for the blue event, place two available moderates anywhere. Two moderates anywhere without... Active. Yeah, I will do that. We'll play the event. We get to place two moderates anywhere. I'm going to place one here. And... which denies red control. And we'll place the other one here, which also denies red control. Okay. They keep their opposition, doesn't affect their victory, but it will affect their income during those propaganda rounds. And again, it's kind of... it's playing that middle ground. They don't want the reds nor the whites to be too powerful. At present, I think the reds are edging towards victory. So yeah, that's what they'll do. The reds... Um, what are they going to do? They can do a full command. They still need more flip cells, so maybe they'll do an activism action. Yeah, they will. They'll do a full command and special. Actually, you know what? Full command and special. They don't need limited to activism, so they'll do limited. They will engage in activism. They'll spend a resource through that. And a resource to roll the dice. So it costs them two resources to do this action. Um, and this is how many cells they flip over. If it's a two, hey, it's a four. Now these have to be kind of evenly distributed. So you can't do one, two, three, four, all in the one area. So they'll do... They'll do one, two, three... Oh, I'm not going to do Helsinki because it's likely going to be terrorised away in just a moment. Uh, four. Okay, so that gives them opportunities now for more actions across these areas and to raise sort of a decent amount of money. Um, so eligibility first, second, third. That's the event. This is the next event, general election. The executing faction places one available cell, enemy cell in the town, then shifts any one space towards active support or active opposition. Um, Okay, that's an interesting one. Right now, shift anyone, shift any space one level toward active support or active opposition. Or place two cells anywhere, or one friendly active cell anywhere. That would be a good. So the whites are going to do this event. So I can place two cells anywhere. Or, oh, you know what I haven't been doing is counting my cells. I need to update that in a moment. I'm going to place one friendly active cell anywhere without enemies active support or active opposition. And I'm just going to place it here, which gives me white control of that area. They're pretty happy about that. Okay. Now the reds... Um, look, they want this opposition. But you know what, they've just gone to all this effort of putting all their active cells out, so they want to do a command. And they're going to rally, because they want to get more cells out on the board. They want cells here to gain control, they want cells here to gain control, they want cells here to gain control. Oh, they can't afford all that, so they can only afford two. So what they can do, okay... Oh, you know what, they need the money. They can't do... We'll, we'll do this first. Um, Two resources, two spaces. They, when they rally, they place. Um, you know what? They'll do it. They'll do it here. One, two, because they get one plus one per level of uh, opposition. Minus white terror, minus support. There's nothing there, so no negatives. And then again, up here, they get one plus one per level of opposition. Okay. So they've placed four cubes on the board, they need to count up again. So we've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. So we're close to the wall breaking out. There's an escalation of the tension between the reds and the whites. Three more pieces, and this red revolt will occur. 
it, it automatically comes out at the end as the next available card and it's a red event. It's treated as a red event. Okay, so now that red has done that, they'd still get a special and their special activity is the political event. They, in up to four spaces with, I should note, red control now here and red control now here. Now, in up to four spaces with red active cells and red control, they get resources. So one, two, three, four. Brilliant, they've made money from that action. Exactly what they wanted. Blue could now do, so here's, this is an interesting situation. They could pass and get a resource, great. Or they could do a limited command. And because red will be ineligible and white will be D, by doing a limited command C, C is higher than D, so they'll remain first eligible and white will go second. So they may as well get a free kind of limited, not free, but they'll get a, a limited command and remain the first eligible faction. And they want to engage in politics. Now they don't want white, white resolve this issue first, so they'll basically give red a political counter and that costs them two resources. One, two. Yeah, pretty happy with that. So red is ineligible, blue is first, white is second eligible. That's the current event. This is the next event. The next event, in one space with a friendly cell, Senate or Reds can do free terror regardless of active status. Moderate resources, minus three, ouch. Or the moderates conduct a special activity or a free limited command. Um, right now, the faction places one cell in a town and shifts. The blues kind of want this event and they want to stop that happening. So they're gonna pass, they gain a resource of passing. Whites now have free reign to do whatever they want. Um, what do we do? Do we do the event or do we go all out for a command and a special? What do we need? Ooh. We need to make some money. And a command and a special would give us some resources. We could do four resources, active Senate cells and Senate control. We now have four of those. One, two, three, four. So we could make four resources and maybe a rally to start building some troops. Um, yeah, I think we'll do that. Okay, so we're doing a rally. We're going to gain four resources first. One, two, three, four. Now let's build our army up. We will pay one resource to build here. And now keep in mind the whites can build anywhere, including Helsinki. Rally, they can rally anywhere. They don't get a lot, they only get basically one army, but they've got an active troop here. Active cell here, it might be sort of worth jumping into the city, jumping into the main town down here. So that's two. And oh, you know what? I can't do that because I'm running out of. Oh, it is after the first propaganda. Sorry. The whites can only use 10 cells until the first propaganda. We've had the first propaganda card. We're now to the second, so they can do that. They'll place. <clears throat> oh, you know what, though? <laughs> I remember. Um, when this. Um, Red Revolt comes out, the Reds can kill all white in one town with red cells, Reds may remove all Senate or do a free rally. So if I place all my whites here, the Reds can instantly get rid of it. So I don't want to do that. Um, instead, we might rally, we might rally here. This gives me three cells here and two cells here. The one free one and the one for the support. That now adds five cells to the game, one, two, three, four, five, which triggers the pivotal event and phase two of the game. 
So we resolve the full white action. Pretty much already done, right? Um, that costs them, sorry, two resources. One, two, doing things out of, a bit out of whack. Um, they, their, their special activity was to secure those resources before they did that action. So they're all done. Now the pivotal event comes out. So when it becomes a current, so uh, yeah, it's they're, they're on the map. So twenty more, twenty-seven cells on the map at the conclusion of a faction's turn. The next event is discarded without effect. So that'll be discarded without effect, and the next event now will be this. So white becomes ineligible. That's uh, a shame for the blues because they were really hoping to get that event to happen, but doesn't matter. Um, this, sorry, this is the next event, and we flip that, and we resolve basically this card. This is the revolt, the start of the Civil War. Regardless of eligibility status, move the red cylinder as if they had taken an event action. So it doesn't matter that they were second, this event sort of trumps that. The reds may select one town with any red cell and remove all senate cells there or conduct a free limited command rally in one town. I think they'd like to remove that white presence in Helsinki because not only because it's a cell but because it's an active cell so they'll kill that off which really hurts the whites down here. Um, I was just talking about how important Helsinki is and they've just lost it. <clears throat> then the reds, then the senate place any capability markers on the map. All right, so the reds first, where are they gonna place their commander and their cannon? I think they've gotta place it with their big army down here. The whites now do the same thing, and um, look, I know they've got this big army in Vasa, but this is where their train is, okay? So they can put their train at the train station, and they can always move this army out of Vasa later on. So here's the two forces, basically, <laughs> one and two. Um, oh, the Senate must place the Jaegers in Vasa. Okay. May as well put the train there as well. Now we place a number of German troops out of play in the German forces box, and they won't invade for a long time, not until 1918. So probably a couple of cards away. Um, we place or remove Russian troops equal to vassalage. They're on three vassalage. There are three Russian troops, so that's all okay. And the game now enters phase two. And this opens up the possibility for um, movement and attack from the Reds and the Whites. And yeah, that's it. So blue, we, we continue. Um, blue can now do either a command and a special or a limited command, or they can pass. So this is the next event, uh, just Russian vassals by one or flip 1d6 of friendly cells. Um, the, the blues don't have many active cells, but to be honest, they don't really need that many. They don't really do much with their active cells. Um, they kind of, they want to remain kind of underground in contrast to the reds and the whites. So, uh, I'm not too worried about this event. Technically, of course, that's still there. They might do... They've only got one cell left. More politics, eh? They'll do a limited command. More politics. We will add... We'll add a white marker just to give us some flexibility. And that's all we're going to do. So... These become first, they become second, they become third. That's 
out. That's the next, the current event. This is the next event. Weapons from Lenin. Um, shift either vassalage by one. Oh, interesting. So it could either increase Russian strength, increase German strength, um, or reduce either of those two. Okay, we've got white first. Um, interesting, interesting, interesting. What do the whites want to do? They've got a good basis for their resources. They want to start really mobilizing. Um, they've got this big army in Vasa which they want to get out of there, so maybe a march. Um, yeah, I think they'll do a limited command. All they can do is spend a resource to march their army out of Vasa. Keeping three behind with their train and their garrison. The, the Jaeger, sorry. That's it. This gives blue now. They can't do the event. They can do a command and special or a limited. Uh, well, they don't need to rally because they've got most of their troops on the board. They could do what's called a message. Um, uh, they could place their personality. This is their personality down here. Um, I don't really, I haven't uh, played the Blues before, so I don't really know <laughs> what they do with these. I know the news is used, they publish the news, I think. They're, they're the weirdest faction, I'll say that. Um, they definitely need to get politics up, so I could do politics, it's the safest action. Uh, gives them a victory point, basically, if they succeed with that die roll. What else do they need? They need networks, so they need bases, so I could build a base in... It's a dangerous place to be with all these red cells, I'll say that much. So they can also negotiate, which flips enemy cells face down. Um, I think they'll let the reds and the whites fight it out before they kind of get too heavily involved. I think they also need to... Four, yeah, that's okay. Um, I think politics, they just don't know what to do, so... Or, I'm just thinking, I could rally, get my network out. They're called networks. Um, although it's hard. This is the only place that's eligible and there's a lot of opposition there. Yeah, as I said, dangerous place for them to be. Look, I think, because just because I'm so indecisive, we'll do a limited command. We'll engage in politics. We'll place a white cube there. Um, and that's about it. Yeah, so first eligible, second eligible, third eligible. This is the current event that the Reds can pick. This is the upcoming event. Place two friendly cells or place one friendly active cell anywhere without the enemy's active support. That is a good event for red or white. Or first the executing faction conducts a limited command, then the moderates place a cube. Um, I don't know if the Reds really care that much about vassalage. Well, they do actually. They kind of want to increase Russian vassalage. Keep those Russians on the board. But they can do it with a special anyway. 
the idea of placing more active red cells is pretty cool. You know, we could get, uh, play some, I think they're going to do that. They're going to stay active, get a resource, pass, basically. Blue now has the option. They don't care about Vassalage either, really, at this stage. They are again, though, going to do a limited command and engage in more politics. So the more they engage in politics, it's a simple little command. They place a cube, that's all they do. But the more they do so, the, the, <laughs> the better their chance of gaining a victory point during that, um, that phase. White. Now white. Ooh, white, white, white. They... They can... Jeez, they could attack. They could do a limited command, attack into Harme. Ooh, do you want to see some combat? I think we can do... We can do this on the cheap with a limited command, or we can do a command special and gain some money in the process. That's the only real difference, and I'll be ineligible for the next card. I think we might. What we'll do is we'll do a command special. We'll attack. It's going to cost me one resource to attack here. And we'll see what happens as a result of this combat. So I'm going to leave three behind. Actually, we don't need to leave that much behind. We'll leave... Take them all in. March in there. We're using our train. So normally we wouldn't be able to do this. The train lets me attack from adjacent space. I bring my Jaegers with me. Um... Yeah, and now we've got combat in this space. Now the Reds are unprepared for this. Their forces, their cannons, their commander is in Tempir. Not ready for this attack on Harme. That's the benefit of trains. So when you engage in combat, you look at this little sort of summary sheet down the bottom here. Um, there, I'll, I'll read it out basically. There are, if there are three more attacking cells, Yes, plus one for the attacker. Um, Jaegers, plus two, that's plus three. There are no Germans, no Russians, no prepared markers, no commanders for the attacker. They have their Jaegers, so... Sorry, yep, so the cannon, the train counts as plus two. So it's a total of plus five. The defenders have basically nothing they can use. So it's a plus five modifier which is basically the best you want. Um, a six is always a failure, so there's no point having six or more. Five is the best you can get. What we do now, the whites roll the die. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, a six is an automatic failure. That's a, that's a failure. That's the end of the action. Hey, Charles. Welcome. Um, nothing happens as a result of that. It's just a waste of their action, a waste of their resource. However, um, it does give the whites control of this area. They're now there with their large force of cells in this sort of, this province here. They do have control and they still have their special activity left because they did a command and special. They can now do a crackdown in this area, which shifts the space one level towards neutral, which makes it neutral, which denies the reds some victory points. It places a white terror marker in that space, which will make it difficult for the reds. Oh, I should also point out, when you engage in combat, one of your cells flips up as well. So it places a white terror marker, and it increases polarization, which makes, it, makes political actions more difficult. So they've started to fight, there's terror, the reds and whites don't want to come to the table to negotiate. Um, the nation is becoming more polarized, politics is more difficult, yeah, the nation's at war. That's it. So white becomes ineligible. Red is first. Blue is second. Here's the current event. This is the next event. Hey, it's a propaganda. So it becomes the first immediate um, event to happen. No faction has met their victory condition. The whites are on one town. They need four. So that in effect, their margin is negative three. The reds are on five. They need 12. They're on negative uh, seven. And 
Blues need a couple of things to happen there a long way from that as well. They need more networks, less polarization and more resources. Politics. Now, the blues. Look up here. There are four cubes. They need four or less. Success. They can pick who they want. Now, because they gave the last one to the whites, they'll give this one to the reds. Um, that's one issue each. We now get resources. Um, and the Senate gets one for each level of support. So they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you can see that investment paid off. Seven plus three up to ten. The reds gain one for each level of red controlled population. One, two, oh, three, that's all. One, two, three. And the moderates gain one for every pair of polarization up to five. So four gives them two resources. Hey, that's looking pretty good for the moderates. Now we do support. There's Russian vassalization deterioration, which means that the one of the Russian armies is two levels, three Russian armies, one, two, three, four, five, six, four. So the Russians leave Helsinki. Then we do agitation. This is where you begin to shift the forces if you've got an active cell there. Um, so now that I have active cells and control, the whites can spend two resources for their first one, because now there's a red resolved issue, and the third resource for their second, to shift this space now, excuse me, to active support. That's about all they can do, because they've, oh, here, uh, it's not active here, that's all they can do. Oh, here as well. Two more resources to flip this to active support as well. Um, they don't really need that. They're pretty good with resource generations. There'll be two more propaganda cards coming out. But in the very least, it makes it harder for the Reds to shift that back. Okay, the Reds can do something similar where they have control and Red active cells. Here, for example, again, the first one costs them two resources. And they gain a victory point for that. And gee, that's about all they can do, because it's full here, it's full here, and they don't have control in these towns. So maybe they should do more rallying. Um, and the moderates, where there is no control, moderate pieces, and one or more population. Again, there are no, they need to move their cells around to be able to do that. They're not overly concerned with doing that again. It's still kind of at the midway stage. Um, and that's it, sorry, I should, technically, yes, you should move these down. That's an easy way to track it, but I'm, I'm using this easy propaganda card summary on one of the player aids, rather than using this, the even smaller summary on the side of the board. Then we uh, remove sabotage, terror, and news markers. Um, there are none. And that's it. Propaganda card is done. That's the next card. That's the next card out. So, look folks, this is probably, we're about, I think we're just about halfway through the game. There are four propaganda cards in the game. We've gone through two, and there are two more coming out, but hopefully this gives you a sense of how it all plays out. Again, it, um, it has the same sort of core elements of mini coin games. This is the, I guess, most innovative feature and the scarcity of eligibility icons along the card. Instead, it uses this system with the little um, numbers, uh, letters, sorry, in the bottom right to determine the next order of eligibility. The game escalates and you can see conflict has broken out. So the whites have begun to march their army to the south. The reds, I kind of feel, got off to a good start. Uh, I feel like they might be in a bit of trouble. They've got decent defences here in Tampere, um, but the problem is um, the whites have that train, and so the whites kind of have that initiative. Um, for the reds, if the reds attack the whites, they have to first march in there, wait, and then attack. And in the meantime, the whites can jump on them and attack first. 
Um, I think it's always better to be the attacker because you get an extra modifier for attacking troops. Uh, and you can spend resources to bolster your attack. So just having that train gives the whites kind of a bit of initiative in deciding when and where combat happens. Uh, the moderates, at the same time, the moderates are doing pretty well. They've got the resources they need to win the game. All they need to do, well, I say all they need to do, when the next propaganda card comes out, if this marker is higher than polarization and they still have 15 or more resources, the moderates win. Um, and you know what? There's not, there's not a great deal that the reds and the whites can do to affect that. They can increase polarization by engaging in terror. But that's about it. Uh, they can look for event cards that deduct moderate resources. But at the same time they're doing that, they're trying to fight this civil war. Um, so that, that, that combination of factors creates this very interesting dynamic where the, the whites, the Senate, is trying to defeat the Red Army. The Red Army is trying to defeat the White Army. The, 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 the Senate needs to gain control of these towns. So they're a long way from that. It's looking good for them. They've got a good army with good capabilities, but they need to launch this offensive. The Reds want to hold on to what they've got, bring out more forces, and control some of these towns, um, all whilst keeping an eye on the moderates. <laughs> um, yeah. And of course, so just to give you a sense, we're a couple of cards away from 1918. This is when the German cards start to come out, and this is when the Germans will invade, um, and that will be a separate factor, a very small factor, I'll point out. They don't do a great deal, but um, they kind of disrupt all these plans. Well, I might wrap it up here, folks, for now. Um, might return to it later, but uh, hopefully it's given you a sense of, of how it all plays out. Um, that is all bridges burning, Red Revolt and White Guard in Finland in 1917-1918 by GNT Games. Thanks, everyone, and take care.